What is the seller BDA system? I don't know what you're going to find out today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts... Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 158. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, BDA, BDA. Hmm, what could that possibly mean? The BDA. And I just love acronyms being a prior military person. Uh, it's just in my nature. So and it's easy, and I, and we we have a lot of them. We have all <laughs> nicknames for all of our courses at WBNL Coaching, right? Yes, we and do. We can find a name so that we can have an acronym around that. So seller BDA, that's what we're going to talk about today, and it stands for before, during, and after, breaking down the cycle of what you do with the seller and putting the systems in place for before, during, and after. That's what I want to come to. I love it. Should we just dive in? Let's dive in. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Okay, so here we are. Welcome to the podcast. It is episode 158. This is just a, a I'm going to just share the, uh, an image with you that will help you understand as part of a, a slide deck that we have, and it's a concept that we teach. And we are in the middle, by the way, of recording a very exciting upgrade to our core fundamental training course, which used to be called CYRB, which oh. stands for Connecting Your Real Estate Business. And now, since we have Real Estate Team Builder, which is our signature product, everything you need to know about teams, which you can check that out at wbnlcoaching.com. And if you are thinking of a team, then just go take our free introduction class where, where I go through 12... 12 key tips you'll get 12 great ideas if you are building a team or you're thinking about building a team it also help you decide if you want to build a team and that's absolutely free so we decided to stick with that theme so now we are in the middle of of creating a course called real estate sales builder resb so we have retb resb and then there's going to be a middle one called real estate business builder reb Okay, that one's easy. That yeah. one actually has a, a nickname to it. But in the foundational course that we're teaching right now, which is what, because here's what we've discovered over the years. Matt and I have discovered that many, many, many real estate agents have are really successful in spite of themselves. What I mean is they're just naturally great at selling. You know, there is, there you cannot change the stats. I've been doing this going in, this is my 29th year, Matt, I don't know, 20 something years. Getting pretty close to that. And I don't know, how you slice it. If I ask someone how many people, 10 people get in the business, how many are still there in two years, it's less than two, one to two. There's a 75 to 80% turnover because not everybody's cut out for this. And there are people who get a license and just want to hang their license and that's cool too. But if you're really going to make this work, it, it takes a certain breed. And even those guys that make it are chaotic and they're not, most of them are not organized. And so we really teach systems here, but systems that work for you, they're not cookie cutter systems. They're ideas, they're things we've tried that we've done. We're always learning and growing. Sure. Uh, and so this is just one concept of all those systems. And that is when you work with a seller, there's a lot of things that you have to do. So why not break it down into three areas, focus on it. And I'll give you an example of, of, of what I've been doing because I'm focusing on during right now for our team in Vegas. We've got the after dialed in, the after the sale. We have a, we've talked about it on the podcast before, things that we do to stay in touch with our clients afterwards using uh, mailbox power, brilliant, you know, little cool little things go out to our clients. We've got the before dialed in. That was the first system that we worked on for buyers and sellers. And that basically means the, what, how do you get leads and how do you nurture them so that the, until they become a client? And then, so right now we're working on the during. So that's what I mean. The, the, with the buyer or seller, there's distinctively three areas that you can focus on. And instead of trying to 
lose your mind over all of it. Just focus on one of them. So right now I'm working on during, before we jumped into this podcast, I just was on with a coaching client and I was specific. She was working on her during also, and I gave her the tips I'm going to give you right now. So let's start with before. Before is everything that you're doing to generate leads for sellers. Uh, and we just did a, we just did a, there's a great thing over on our YouTube channel. Go check it out. Five. I just recorded with Matt five ways to get listings now in a low inventory market. These are things I'm sharing with everyone that we're doing five really cool ways that will get you business. Um, if you work one or all of them, or maybe not all of them, but pick one or two or three. So before how you get the leads. Okay. And then you get the lead. Not everybody wants to sell their house right now. So you have to right. nurture the lead. Now the keys to the nurturing, of course, or what a CRM, you must have a CRM that you love. And it is you, your second hand, you know, guy or gal, if you will, it's your virtual assistant. You, when you trust your CRM, it's like hiring someone to help you with, with uh, tasks. Okay. Very true. Because all good CRMs automations and can do things for you. I really believe in using video as part of all of that. So make sure you have that. And then the other thing that's so critical in our opinion, we use our CRM to do all these things. And we have those initial connection campaigns. And we have a lead. So you have that level of, of, the, of the before. But then once you connect with someone, you still need to nurture them. And so our best advice on nurturing, again, you can go back and check the channel. We talk about a hyperlocal newsletter. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've talked about that a local newsletter so that you follow that up with your database and your leads. That's to me, the best touch that you can be doing. You can be leveraging your social media channel that you focus on. Is it, is it video? Is it Facebook? And, and share that kind of content in your newsletter as well as local type things. And for a seller, the other nurturing thing that's critical in my opinion is a uh, something like eProperty Watch, a market report that just sends them once a month what's happening in their neighborhood, who's put their house on the market, what's the average, you know, what is the, what are houses going for? There are so many options for that. I mentioned eProperty Watch. A lot of you have access to that through your local association of realtors or your CRM, your lead generation platform has a solution. So that's before, okay? You're just, you're just checking in with them. They're coming in, maybe they're getting an update on what's going on in the neighborhood and they're getting your newsletter after that initial campaign. Boom, you get that done, you got a system for before. Now, eventually people wanna sell their house. So now it's during. Now during has the lion's share of work you've gotta you got to focus on. So you have all the things you do to pre-listing, all the tasks, your checklist for, you, somebody wants to sell their house and you're gonna go through everything that you normally do, the CMA, getting everything together to go out on the presentation, getting all the paperwork done. That's all part of your listing system in the during phase. Uh, marketing the listing, which doesn't take much right now, but eventually you should always be promoting that you're marketing and doing professional photography and so on. Uh, trust me, the day's coming when, if you're not doing that, you're gonna lose listings. That's right. So you should be doing it now, always, no matter what the market is. Uh, wow people with the level of, of service that you provide and don't go out and take photos with your doggone phone. If I see more photos in the MLS, people using their phone, I mean, how lazy can you be? Spend a hundred bucks, 150 bucks and get some professional photography done. Um, and so you're gonna market it and you're gonna negotiate the offers or the multiple offers, right? And so you need, you need procedures for all of that, even if it's just a checklist. And, and so a system is just nothing more then the checklist, start right there, the during system. And then I'm gonna give you one more idea on how to take it to the next level. So during all, all of these is a checklist. What do I do when I get the lead? What do I do when I get the listing? Everything that I do in the different phases of the listing from new listing to marketing, to offer, to closing, then we would get into the after phase, right? So it can just be a big, huge checklist using Google Drive, for example, if you have an assistant, you can assign tasks to, what does your assistant do for you? If you don't have an assistant, you're doing everything. And this is why I really, this is one of the first things I do with my coaching clients, Matt, because many people just have it up in their head and they're dropping the ball. They're not really servicing their seller. They're not doing a great job. They're doing the best they can with the time they have. And they naturally do it by rote, but you cannot, when you're busy, you can't, you're going to drop balls. So have a checklist. Okay. The checklist can become your operations manual, which then will train your assistants and et cetera. Right. So, that's what I love about it. I want to go a little deeper on the during, and this is what I was just speaking to my, my client, Jessica about. And she was saying, yeah, you know, she, she, she does a pre-listing and she's got a YouTube channel and 
she's got a great video about what she does before she comes out to the appointment, right? And I, I'm really a big believer in a pre-listing system. Uh, and, and I think that'll be a future topic here on our podcast because we'll revisit. I'm sure we've talked about it in years past, but we're going to bring it back because it's super important. So she has that video and then she sends it ahead and she was just sharing with me how much that really helps her during the listing presentation because she preps the client, she, they have everything ready and it sets her apart because it's professional. It's just a wow factor. Um, so we were talking about what else could you do? And my recommendation to her was to, a couple things. We talked about using Gmail templates. If you are a Gmail user, you can simply go into your settings Go to advanced, yep. we'll scroll down. There's a little button that says templates, hit enable. Now you could create a an email that you use again and again and again, like congratulations, we're in escrow or under contract. Here's the next steps. You write that email one time. This is a during task, right? You save it as a template. Alternatively, you could put it into your CRM, save it as a template. She also uses BombBomb, so I'm like, oh my gosh, uh -huh. brilliant make a bomb bomb video and do, and get the Gmail extension for bomb bomb, which is just awesome. Uh, or put your client in bomb bomb and create that template and send that. Now imagine that she's, and she's what she's going to do because she's a video person, send that congratulations. And it, you know, we're in escrow because she said, Jan, uh, that people ask me the same five questions when we're in pending status. I said, great. You're going to create an evergreen video, which you can put on YouTube, which people could find as well but now you're gonna build it in and now it's just nothing more than your, your assistant grabs that and sends it out once you're in escrow. Brilliant. Now that's the first one. What else could you do that would be evergreen, whether for a seller, we're just talking about sellers today. Well, it could be everything from giving them tips on moving to the utilities, what they, a moving checklist to here's all the utilities that you're gonna to need to, to uh, get ready to turn off and let's coordinate with the buyer's agent so that they can just transfer. Here's all that information so you don't have to go look it up. That's brilliant. That could be mm -hmm. a template that could have a video attached to it, right? Um, getting ready, what you need to bring to the closing appointment, what they need to be able to do. For the buyer, there may be a few others that you can add, but you could easily put two or three templated during emails with a video, if you're going to use video, to it, and then have them ready to go. And in your checklist, it's going to say, send you know, moving checklist video email. Boom, it's done. Talk about creating a five-star VIP experience for your clients. That's what we're talking about here. Now, this sounds like a great idea and it's not a new idea and it's been on my list for two years. I'm finally getting to it because I was working on other things, right? But I know the value of once we get this done on the team and we have it and everybody can use it, it's going to just take everything to a new level where people are going to be like, wow these guys have it together. That's they right. are so professional. So when it comes time in the after phase, right, to do those post-closing connections and congratulations and get a gift and put them on your campaign, and one of those tasks is going to be asking for a review, they're more inclined to do that for you, even though you're still going to have to ask how many times? Five times, everybody. At least five times. But as I was telling Jessica today, I was like, look, I think that maybe you only have to ask two or three times when you do these extra levels of things that you're doing for folks. And honestly, she was telling me the client she just closed was like, that was such a great experience. What can I do for you? And she said, actually, you could give me a Yelp review because she's really doing well on Yelp. And, and he was so impressed with her that he said, you know, I don't have Yelp, but I'm willing to create a Yelp account and do some reviews and do a review for you. I was like, wow, that's huge. Better, okay. You know, Jan, we talk about creating the five, the you know, the the five star experience, the white glove experience. You know, for for a client, it's it's easier said than done. But this is the, exactly the reason why you want to do it. I mean, my yeah. guy, can you imagine having a client say, "I'll create a Yelp account to go review you"? That's brilliant. Awesome. That's By amazing. the way, it's Jessica Ball. She's the Jessica Ball team. She works in the Peoria, Illinois area. She is awesome if you it's a shout out to jessica if you ever in fact let's put i'll put her in, i'll give you her information let's put her in the show notes since we spotlighted her today and if you guys have anybody in that area she is her and her husband are investors they can work with investors she works reo she used to do property management and now she has someone else that does that which is great uh, she has a small team she's brilliant okay and so if you ever have anybody in that area she's your person okay? it's a, in the heart of illinois Absolutely. So, and she's just great. Awesome, awesome real estate agent. 
Um, okay, so that's it, really, before, during, and after, right? So just tackle one of them, okay? You, obviously, you generally do before first because that's the one if you're going to generate leads for sellers or buyers, you need to have a good system in place because there's no during or after, <laughs> after you know, until you, <laughs> unless you turn a lead into something. And then what I, what, why I say that is because you, you, may, you may be getting referrals or having your clients work with you and you're just making it happen without a system. So I just encourage you, start working on this. Now, the benefits of this, I hope you can see, are just, you know, tenfold. Besides freeing up your time, feeling like you're in charge of your business, being able to eventually, when you're ready to hire someone, if you don't already have someone, use the the system that you create to figure out. And this is exactly what Jessica is doing. This, she was working. She, we ended today on how she's taking her seller system um, from A to Z, putting it up on Google Drive, and then highlighting in the areas what, what are the things she's doing, what are the things her assistant is doing. And that is it in a nutshell. So now you, when you don't have an assistant, you're doing everything. But ultimately, it becomes the platform for you to uh, delegate, to create a job description, yep. to build an operations manual, which you need if you are a small business owner, which you are, and then that allows you to ultimately have an exit strategy, right? So this is where it all leads with a simple seller checklist, the BDA concept, right? That's you know, Jan, it's interesting with the, uh, you know, the whole pre-listing uh, uh, idea. And you had mentioned that she does a video beforehand, didn't she say that? And it was, yeah, she know, has a video that talks about getting ready to come out to what she's going to do. And You know, think about that for a second. We were in a training yesterday with a, a group of great agents from New Jersey. And uh, the conversation came up just briefly about, you know, where you want to be at the table. Do you want to be first in? You want to be last in? Where you yeah. want to be? If you have um, already... Uh, sent your client a video presentation kind of talking about that, you're already ahead of the game because they already know you, right? They already say your image is in their head. Who cares where you've land in the group? You know, because they're already going to be thinking, well, they're what, you know, that, that, that Jan O'Brien, you know, she said this in her, in her message she sent us yesterday. So it's a brilliant strategy to take all of that where your position is out of the mix because you're already building rapport. You know, you don't have to build that. rapport one-on-one. -on -one. You can build rapport just by your words and images prior to actually getting in and really getting into the guts of rapport. So Brilliant point, Matt. And think about it. How many people are doing that? Are, you know, so if you're going up against a couple other other people, I bet they're not doing the pre-listing approach. So they may. You know what? Especially if you're it. going up, if you are a, a, an agent that is trying to really uh, dominate a market area or, you know, your farm area or geo, whatever you're doing, there's always, you know, the agent that is, you know, the number one agent, unless it's you, <laughs> the number one agent in that area, that is a great way to break into their market because you're going to be, you're going to give them a taste of something different before those people even know what the heck they're getting into. So it's a brilliant strategy. We really need to cover that more. Okay. I love it. So we'll get, we'll have some more detailed notes for you in the show notes over at uh, WBNLpodcast.com episode 158 with a couple of those ideas that I just talked about. Uh, and we'll have Jessica's information in there. Awesome. Okay. Well, sweet. All right. All right. Well, that's a wrap for episode 158 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast for real estate and reality meet. As we mentioned, Oelia, you can get all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, you're headed out on a little trek this weekend that I'm insanely jealous about. I know. I was just going to say, we generally talk about, are we going to get up and get out and do something? And I've been doing visiting some, since I've been in Florida, visiting some parks and sister and I have gotten out and done a few things, but I'm going to go visit the other sisters up in the Canton, Georgia area. And I'm right. hitting the road at Odark 30 for my seven hour Ooh. drive. And I'm very excited to get up there. Uh, it's beautiful here, but it, there's rain. It's 50, 60% chance of rain up there until I get to like Monday, Tuesday so far. But it doesn't matter. I'm excited about a little road trip. Yes. Seeing the sisters and visiting Georgia for a few days. I'm going to be gone for five, six days. That's very cool. I will be uh, living with you vicariously on your road trip, especially because I'm looking forward to getting back out on the road again. So uh, well, uh, maybe we'll do, we'll talk a little bit about it in our next podcast. Cause that I'll would probably, be we actually maybe need to be, I may need to do that remotely from live on location at Georgia. That would be cool. We are going to go. We are going to go do something. So I'll talk a little bit about um, thing. You know, we're going to get out to hopefully if the weather holds, uh, get a, a couple hikes in. Yeah. Well, you go. You've gone on some beautiful hikes in Georgia. So I'm looking forward to seeing where you go this time because it's going to yeah. be. I'm sure. Just what a great time of the year right now in spring. Yeah. You guys. What about yourself? 
We don't have any plans for the weekend so far, so I, I don't know. We Last weekend, our big deal was we were going to watch Oscar movies, and we were all geared up to, to really conquer it, and we, we watched one because we just, I don't know, for some reason. I, I'm not going to tell you we're streamed out because we're far from that, but we have been doing a lot of television. But I do know what you mean. Yeah, so we watched Nomadland last week. Uh, it, what an incredible film that was. Excellent, excellent yeah. film. So we were... Uh, uh, thumbs up. Yeah, and oh my gosh, talk about beautiful scenery. My goodness mm -hmm. gracious. You know, I love the the southwest of this country. And, you know, uh, so many people I talk to talk about how boring the desert is. And I, I think they could not be more wrong. There is more beauty and color and diversity and things to, to really look at in uh, that uh, in that kind of landscape than just about anything. So some people have sometimes to when you're in the mountains, you can't see the forest for the trees. So, you yeah. know, it's like something different there. Good stuff. Excellent. Well, listen, everyone, make sure that you um, uh, uh, mask up, live the life you've dreamed, and, well, you know, be grateful. That's always a good thing. And be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.